Guys and welcome back to another Axel 72 video and today I'm back with another interview and I'm here with Ernie Rutherford. Ernie, how are you lad? I'm good thanks mate. Uh, thanks for having me on the channel and I'm reaching out so yeah, looking forward to um, looking forward to speaking to you. Yeah, so very much appreciate you doing this lad. So if I'm right in saying you're you're 26, you're a super middleweight and you're 2-0 right? Yeah, I'm 2-0, that's right yeah. Okay, so if you're on your around here and you haven't yet subscribed, please do so, like the video if you do indeed like the video. And let's get straight into it. So the question which I always like to ask to start off with is who inspired you to get into boxing, lad? So, I, was, I mean, I was born into it, really. You know, mm -hmm. my dad was a professional boxing coach. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's as far back as I can remember, like from being a, a child, uh, my earliest memories in the gym, I was sitting on the side of the ring watching my dad when I was training the pros. So, you know, it's like, it's always been there for me. Mm -hmm. It's always been something I wanted to do. So I mean, realistically, then your your dad's kind of your inspiration. Then my dad is my, my biggest inspiration. Yeah, mate. Like, honestly, biggest inspiration. And I bet he's your one of your biggest fans as well. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. Yeah, you know, he he pushes me to be the best that I can possibly be. You know, so well, yeah. Uh, sorry, mate. I'm... No, it's fine, mate. Okay, we'll, we'll move it on. So. Obviously, you then went to have a, an amateur career like everybody else does. Do you remember what happened in your first amateur fight? My first amateur fight, mate, everything went out of the window. <laughs> like, it just literally went like, I trained, I trained, um, so I was at my uncle's gym. He owned a gym in uh, Open, Open and ABC. Uh, before my first fight, because I trained for about four or five years, mm -hmm. uh, just in the gym, you know, and then I was sparring top boys or whatever. Thought, yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready now to fight, sort of thing. And the first fight, literally, the bell went, and I come out swinging for the hills. <laughs> you know what I mean? It was just, it was terrible. You know, looking back at that now, I was just thinking, what was I thinking, mate? Mm. But you know, I'm, I was young. I was a kid. It was the first, first proper fight I had in a boxing ring. So, you know, yeah. But, yeah. I mean, obviously, see, that. Look... Sorry, mate. That's right. Yeah, like if everything just goes out the window, like mm. first fight. Yeah, I mean, that's what that's what I've had a lot of fighters say. How old were you when you had your first amateur fight? Uh, I was 13. Oh wow, okay. I was a bit late. Yeah, so a young start then, but um, I suppose that that can lead on to better things in the amateur career-wise. And so how many amateur fights did you have around about? Uh, I had 16 amateur fights. Mm -hmm. um, I, didn't have a, I didn't have a massive amount. I took my box out very well. I mixed it at a good level, but any amateurs, I won a few titles in the way. Yeah, so, I mean, uh, uh, at least you're winning titles and stuff like that. So, obviously, uh, I don't know if there's there's too much you really want to say about this, but am I right in saying you got in a bit of an accident? Yeah, mate, so, it's a, it's a bit of a mad one, really. Like, so, I boxed in the uh, open class senior aviators. Uh, Southern County Finals. In my opinion, listen, anyone who watched the boxing, you know, that's that's why I like professional boxing. You got a longer round, you got more time to to break an opponent down, and it's a clear victory. I mean, so but in the amateur, listen, I'm not putting amateur boxing down, but you do see some very controversial decisions in the amateurs, you know. Mm -hmm. And as far as I was concerned, I, I've done everything in, I've done everything and won that fight. And I sort of, I walked away from that. I was disheartened. I was down, you know, because dedicate so much time and I mean I left school at a young age uh, training with my dad who was going over to uh, I was dri driving to Essex so I trained with the pros you know as, as a kid I left school at like 14 so I was, I was just going down mixing with the pros every day training I was buying stop and stop class opposition um, but everything into it you know for like that time that I did have in the amateurs my goal was to like go on and well my goal was like Olympics you know what I'm saying that's what I was thinking yeah I wanted to get a good, good title and leave my belt, and then turn pro with some sort of clout to get signed by a big promoter. Or, do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It didn't work out for me, obviously. As far as I'm concerned, I was on the wrong end of a bad decision, and um, I ended up met my wife. Had some time out of boxing, you know, went on my own, sort of had a couple of years away. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then I had a car crash. Um, like, well, I was I was doing like 130 mile an hour on the motorway, no seatbelt. Right. You know, just hit yeah, a puddle in the wet. One, I, I didn't even have time to react. Just smashed into the barriers and yeah, man. It was, it 
was a it was a nasty one, but it was an eye opener for me, you know, because it made me like I feel like I've got a second chance again at life to, to crack on and, and do what I'm meant to be doing. Do you know what I mean? But so yeah, it refocused me completely. Refocused me. Yeah, it's it's obviously a, a very sad thing to hear, but of, it seemingly kind of did give you a different kind of aspect on life and a uh, different mindset and I mean it's pushed you on to bigger and better things yeah yeah like I say um, everyone's got their own stories I mean mm. I, I speak to you know I'm, a, I'm all my life mate I've been an underdog mm. you know what I mean that's the way I look at it and even in the professional rankings now like people look at me like I'm an underdog but that's fine like, I keep looking at me that way mm. because I'm going to surprise everybody you know and like obviously like, boxing is about ticket sales that's what it comes down to. It's a money, yeah. like, first of all, a money sport. Yeah. Like, the backing I've got and the support I've got from people like, around me, like close friends, family. I mean, I can do like, I can do 500 tickets a fight. Oh, right, yeah. okay. Is there, any, is there any reason why I shouldn't be on the, the big shows? Mm. You know what I'm saying? But that's we're cool. working towards that. But, you know? Yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely uh, something that comes with time. Um, yeah. So, obviously you then went on to have your, your two fights and which one would you say was your toughest and how did you kind of handle that adversity? So, the, what you said about, about my professional fights. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, I mean, the geezer I boxed last time at Harry Matthews. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if you know much about Harry, mm-hmm. but uh, like, he, he's mixed it with top, top level fighters. I mean, he's, He's boxed a lot of world champions, like people have fought for world titles, or yeah. So he's not like he's not your everyday journeyman. Yeah. You know I'm saying? A lot of fighters just jump in and say, you know what, like I'll just take this bang over and mm. get him out of the way or whatever. It's it's about building, Definitely. yeah. And a lot a lot of fighters out there at the moment, even boys that are like ten and old, mm. they're boxing mugs. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry to put it in that way, but no, they're, 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 they're boxing people that that's not going to test them. Do you know what I mean? Mm. I jumped in there in my second professional fight with a geezer who's he's boxing the weekend that he's on his 80th fight. Right. Yeah. Right, so just the just the experience obviously is tough, you know. Mm, definitely. I wanna get every, I wanna knock everyone out. That's the like when I when I fight I, I want to knock out, I want the highlight mm-hmm. definitely. But man he was tough, he could he, he, he like little things he was doing in the ring, he was like you know what I mean, mm. trying to manoeuvre me there and like holding me like I've never had that hold up like he didn't outclass me. Yeah. Like, it was a good fight, yeah. Mm-hmm. I was pushed him all the way. I was very, very, very close to stopping him a few times. I mean, yeah. I had glider ring off. We had a little chat, and then he said, "Like you, you, you had, you had been going there a couple of times." I mean, but yeah, um, just kind of didn't get a stoppage. Yeah, uh, obviously, it's it's what happens at the at the start. You want to have them tests. Yeah, yeah. Of course, it's a learn. It's a learning fight. I mean, mm-hmm. I, I learn. I learn more out of them four rounds than than I ever did in any of my other fights. Mm. So I'm saying that goes for amateur as well. Yeah, that's that's not surprising, to be honest. Um, but, I mean, you obviously did get through that fight, and from what I've heard, you've got a, a fight announcement for the 1st of October? 1st of October, mate. Yeah, I'm stepping up to six rounds, so I'm, I'm oh. jumping straight. Like I say, um, I'm jumping straight, in, straight into the deep end. You know, I want to get I want to get get more rounds under my belt, Definitely. better opponents, you know, and uh, start making some noise. Yes, yeah, so uh, have you started a, started a camp for that yet or have you just upped the tempo in training? I have. I mean, I, I've not, I haven't stopped training. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was supposed to be fighting uh, the 6th of September, mm-hmm. um, but I had a bit of a shoulder injury in training. Um, but yeah, I've been just been like, doing my physio, everything's about the shoulders back now 100%. Mm-hmm. Uh, still been training, still been doing my fitness. I'm not slacking in fitness at all. Uh, and then like I said, I've got six weeks now to um to put a toe down yeah make sure i'm razor sharp i'm ready yes all right and then are you trying to possibly fight again before the end of the year maybe december time i mean it's it's hard for me because where like where where are where are i've, I've got like tick, a ticket deal mm-hmm. um, christmas is around the corner yeah. obviously it's, like, it's a hard time of year for everyone so i mean so i want to get out before the end of the year of course i'd love to but like the way it is at the moment with like the cost of living and everything mm. and ticket sales, you know, that's that, that, that that's what that's what gets the money in. So like with Christmas being on top of everyone, I 
I don't think maybe I don't know yet. I mean, I hope I hope so. Yeah, yeah. If I can get out, if I can get out like end of October, early November. All right. I think anywhere towards Christmas, maybe I'm, I think I might give it a miss, you know. All right, fair, yeah. yeah. So obviously you're you're only at the start of your career at the moment. So I was just kind of wondering for anybody that watches this that might want to come and watch you, why you why they should come and watch you? What are you going to bring to the table? I carry power in both hands, and if I land, they're going out. <laughs> <laughs> Great, all right. Um, and I've got two more questions. So you're obviously 26, so yeah. you're kind of heading towards the, the prime years. Um, where do you see yourself in five years? What have you accomplished, lad? Five years. I mean, like by the end of next year, like, I want to, I want a title, mm -hmm. southern area, uh, English, and then I'm gonna move. Sh I want to move straight onto like WBC, Intercontinentals, and uh, Silvers and things like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. I want to go the European route, but five years time, mate, you're gonna see me up on a big screen somewhere. Yes, love to see it, mate. All right. Um, so we'll leave with this final question, which I always like to ask anybody who's come comes on the channel. Is there anything you'd like to shout out, like your sponsors or anything? Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, uh, all my. I mean, I've been sparring with um, Joel McIntyre. Mm -hmm. He just got the English title one the other night. You know, mm -hmm. I've been quite, we'll be doing a lot of sparring together. So thanks, Joel. Um, I want to thank Well Hydrate. Uh, they just come on board, start sponsoring me. Mm -hmm. uh, my pal uh, Jane Wallace. Team JW training, you know, he, like, he's always, he's always so much, showing me so much support. Mm -hmm. um, my fight camps, if I need, ever need anything, you know, but like, training, or, you know, he's always got my back. So, yeah, thanks, um, thanks to them guys, man, for making, for making things a little bit easier for me. Great. Okay, so thank you very much for doing this interview, lad. Thanks very much, man. I appreciate having me on. I say, um, it's the first time I've ever done like a live uh, interview to a link thing, so. I hope it don't come out too bad. No. I hope I swear either. No, I mean I'm not I'm not fussed <laughs> if you're swearing or not to be honest, mate. No, you seem you yeah, seem man. like a pro, you seem like a very humble guy as well and um yeah, uh, man. You know, like, there's, there's no point being the big attitude, the big yeah. I am, right? At the end of the day I box is what I do for a living. I'm um, yeah. like walk around growling everyone and trying to make like, everyone think I'm the same guy I'm not, do you know what I mean? Like, I'm yeah. just I'm Definitely. So and obviously I from what you've heard you do seem like you're confident in yourself, which is always nice to see. Listen, if I didn't, if I didn't think that I could go on and do something big, I wouldn't, I wouldn't bother putting, I wouldn't bother. Do you know what I mean? Definitely. But I've dedicated so much of my life. Like, there's a lot, there's a lot of people don't see. Do you know what I mean? There's mm. struggles boxers go through, even people, everyday people go through. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? And that's not, that's never, none, none of that stuff's ever documented. Mm -hmm. But like, I've got the will, I've got the desire, I've got the determination. You know. I, train my ass off every single day yeah and i'm waiting for my opportunity yes and i'm sure your opportunity will come very soon my friend uh, yeah. and i'm sure it won't be too long until you're, you're fighting for them belts maybe then we can come back and do a return interview oh 100 percent mate 100 percent i'll uh i'll have the belt on my shoulder we're doing interview. all right okay great well um thanks for watching the video like it if you didn't like the video subscribe if you're new and thanks for watching